Hi, I wanted to talk about Mistlands ammunition. Mainly just bolts and arrows, ballista missiles are uh, uh, not, not the best right now. Just make your black metal ones for certain situations. Even then, it's the vertical angle on ballista are really not very good. And y'all know their flying enemies could just cheese them at a certain angle. So, not entirely reliable. For now. For now. But, anyway, they're just linear, pure physical, make the black metal ones they're the best. Uh, Whatever is highest physical, that's the one. Uh, bolts, same sort of thing. You got your bone bolts. Uh, I would make those just for regular, everyday sniping. And then, carapace bolts are your best in terms of just raw physical damage. That's all we have right now. Uh, lightning bolts in the future would be really cool because frost and lightning damage deals 1.5 times to uh, wet enemies and lightning damage is the only elemental damage that is calculated in terms of staggering so considering just how much burst immediate damage the arbalest already does maybe future iterations of crossbows and bolts you know if we get like a lightning something here and there whether it be a lightning crossbow or a lightning bolt. I think that could be really good in the Ashlands and beyond because uh, any wet enemy, they're going to get hurt. Hurt. So long as they're, of course, neutral to lightning. Uh, naturally, like frost crossbows would be nice as well, but the burst, heavy burst damage fits lightning more, and I like the term lightning bolt. That's just great. And now, interesting thing. Now, moving to uh, arrows here. Uh, Carapace arrows aren't actually terribly good at the moment. They're kind of silly. They are now the most staggering in an arrow at 72, which is the same as their piercing damage, of course, but secret types are resistant to all physical damage. So their damage is just 36, uh, not, not necessarily the best. Now we look at frost arrows. Frost arrows, of course, versus a neutral target. They out damage even carapace arrows. Look at that. 78 total damage. So if you have a target that's neutral to pierce and frost, like the y'all are, boom, this is your arrow of choice. That doesn't even take into account that, of course, seekers are resistant to pierce and not frost. And like I said, wet enemies take 1.5 times damage against... Uh, Frost and Lightning. So, this means that Frost Arrows deal 65 damage to Seeker types. So, really good for solo archers. Really just good for anybody that's going to bring a bow into the Mistlands, which I highly recommend for the y'all. Uh, it's just incredible because uh, Wet Dverger, which you might encounter here and there at the docks or wherever, it'll deal a total of 104 damage which is amazing, and it slows them down. And then Wet Seekers, which you can find in uh, either just aquatic situations where you lure them into water, or just in the infested mines, you have some wet pits where they uh, get wet at the bottom. Usually you have like a wooden bridge, and then there's like a pathway coiling down around into a wet pit. The Seekers down there are wet, and they will take 91 total damage. From Frost Arrows. So yeah, Frost Arrows, really, really good. It's going to be your best arrow overall in the Mistlands. Highly recommend making them. Uh, this, uh, notice I didn't, I did make these a long time ago. Why did I do that? Big mistake. Use all of your obsidian for Frost Arrows. Absolutely. <laughs> no more, no obsidian arrows. That's, that's a mistake. Uh, interestingly enough though, Mages... And co oping with mages, playing mage, brings an alternative into the fray. Fire arrows. Yes, because the way that fire DOT works, the more instance of fire damage is applied, the higher the fire DOT stacks. And the more it ticks. Of course, that tick gets reset. So, if you are slinging fireballs, your friend is slinging fireballs... Maybe you have like a starred seeker soldier down, uh, you, got, you got some sort of vantage point, they can't climb particularly steep structures, they can climb a, uh, a, a route, 
of Yggdrasil, they can climb that all right. But they cannot climb particularly steep. Come on, chicken, what are you doing? They cannot climb particularly steep rocks, which are plentiful in the Mistland. So you can get this vantage point, start slinging fireballs, and then you can keep that DOT up for free with your cheaper fire arrows, even though it deals that not too much damage. It's keeping the DOT up and stacking that DOT. That's leading to much more effective damage because that fire damage from the staff members is up to 120. Like that is a that is a lot. That is a lot. I think 126 when you get it to quality two. So yeah, just really good. Especially good versus starred soldiers. Uh, if just seeker soldiers in general, if you're co-oping uh, versus the queen, it's great. Just get that DPS up. Maybe stack it with bile bombs too. So, so nice to just keep shredding, shredding these high HP monsters. Uh, if you are in a encounter, you want to be a pure archer though. Still, highly prioritize frost arrows because it is just beastly in terms of overall damage. It slows the targets down, you're going to kill them quicker. What you want for that is actually counterintuitive. Stay in the mid-range. They won't fly at you, they'll try to wriggle around and crawl to you. Of course, while they crawl to you, they are slower than flying at you, and you have all sorts of time to snipe them down, especially considering the frost slowdown. Just absolutely wonderful. So stay in the mid-range if you can. Uh, if you have some sort of mid-range vantage point, absolutely demolish Seekers. Star, doesn't matter. You're cheesing them, you're destroying them. Gotta love it. Uh, interestingly enough, Y'all, same sort of situation. Sort of stay in the mid-range if you can stay right under them and just launch frost arrows at them. It's just devastating. Devastating. Now, in the future, in the Ashlands, though, if we have targets that are resistant to frost, which is what I'm expecting, carapace arrows are just going to be extremely strong, raw damage, get a ton of staggering in there. It's just going to be the arrow. So I recommend stocking up on a bunch of those for Ashlands. I'm also predicting a lot of these undead creatures in the Ashlands to be uh, weak to, or at least vulnerable to, spirit. And while spirit arrows are very expensive and they're not too much uh, in terms of spirit, it has the same effect that fire arrows do, as in it keeps the DOT going and it stacks. So you have high spirit damage with uh, Silver Sword, maybe even Crystal Battle Axe, some sort of thing like that. Frostner, hello. Uh, probably just Silver Sword, because that 45 Spirit is a beast. Man, keeping that Spirit up as a mid-back range uh, type of character in co-op, or, or just like if there's just a problem creature, maybe you smacked it a couple times with your sword and you gotta get away and to step back into the mid-range, you can use that time to launch some Silver Arrows, and even though they're kind of expensive, Expensive. You know, it's a metal arrow after all. It's very painful. Uh, silver is the most satisfying metal to get that you have to mine so far. Maybe the Ashland has a better one. But being able to pop those silver veins with gravity and an iron pickaxe, Yggdrasil pickaxe, uh, black metal pickaxe, looking back at it, going back and getting silver ain't too bad. Especially when you've already probably got a Mist Lens Mountain Outpost. For your obsidian and freeze glands for your frost arrows. Not bad, not bad at all. And uh, I have quite the amount of uh, silver here. So yeah, I'll be I'll be ready and waiting. And uh, my lovely chickens will provide all of the lovely feathers for me and some meat. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the guide. Uh, link to my original arrow guide for the previous biomes in the description and comment section. And I will see you guys some other time. Bye!